This is a photo that changed the entire world of women's sports. In it you see 20 year old Catherine Switzer being berated and hounded by Jock Semple during the 1967 Boston Marathon. But why was this moment so important and what have we learned from it? Well today's video is episode 4 of Lessons in Resilience and we'll tell the story behind this iconic photo. Catherine Switzer's story is one that embodies one key face of resilience, that of defiance. Now defiance is quite rightly something that's not appropriate in a lot of contexts, but defiance is also a necessary fuel for any dramatic form of social change that we've seen throughout human history. And defiance was at the heart of Catherine Switzer's general approach to life throughout her teenage and early college years. She had a passion for running, something deemed in the 1960s as inappropriate for women that women were too weak and fragile to deal with the incessant pounding of their joints on pavement mile after mile. But Switzer was one of the few people, and even the few women at the time, who didn't buy into that. She would run on her own, her competition being herself, because there were no other female runners around or races that females could enter at the time. But she showed enough talent to be granted permission to unofficially train with the men at her university. It was there that her coach Ernie Briggs shared stories of running the famous Boston Marathon, the holy grail of marathons. And this inspired Switzer. She thought to herself, well, I could run 10 miles a night, so why couldn't I tackle this very demanding race? But even her coach laughed her off at first, echoing those views that women couldn't physically accomplish this particular feat. But that was more than enough motivation for Switzer. She declared that she would run it whether her coach Briggs was by her side or not. But he soon came round to the idea. At the time the Boston Marathon was run exclusively by men, it was deemed a race exclusively for men. But Switzer and Briggs noticed that there was nothing in the rules that actually mentioned anything about the gender of participants. So Switzer went ahead and just signed up, but exercised a little bit of caution by using her initials and her surname, KV Switzer. Race day came, and when warming up, Switzer kept her hoodie up and was just ticked off by race officials and shoved into the starting pen after showing her now iconic 261 bib. The race started and suddenly her fellow runners who were previously too busy psyching themselves up during their own warm-ups noticed that a woman was amongst them. But the response was one characteristic of runner camaraderie. Excited men proclaimed, look, a girl. And Switzer was encouraged by those she shared the Boston pavement with. But this excitement and encouragement was short-lived, however. A press fan soon came up behind Switzer and her pack. And as they passed, the onboard photographers and journalists noticed her. They pointed her out and drew her to the attention of race director Jock Semple, who also happened to be on this bus. The feisty Scotland then shouted for the bus to be stopped, and the next thing you knew, he was chasing after Switzer. With a ferocity in his eyes, he lunged at Switzer, shouting, get the hell out of my race and give me those numbers, literally trying to rip the 261 off of Switzer's back. But fortunately, as he got within inches of Switzer, her boyfriend Tom Miller, a 235 pound football player, came at Semple with a body check to send him flying. Switzer by this point had realised that her race was in jeopardy, but she quickly thought about the magnitude of what she was actually doing, and defiance was the only option and the right option at that time. And she declared to her boyfriend Tom that she would finish this race if it meant crawling on her hands and knees. Fortunately, Switzer remained untouched for the rest of the race and finished her marathon in 4 hours and 20 minutes, becoming the first ever woman to officially complete the most widely recognised race in the world. And her life was never the same since. She became an icon for women's sport, and her work as a campaigner led to women finally being granted entry to the Boston Marathon in 1972. And she also played a pivotal role in getting the women's marathon accepted into the Olympic Games in 1984. Switzer's act of defiance is one that we can all learn from. She simply decided to do something that she wanted to do, and she saw no legitimate reason as to why she couldn't. She deliberately chose to ignore what was, although questionable, the widely accepted beliefs and norms surrounding the athletic capability of women. And she ended up taking full responsibility for this act of defiance, because when she set out to run, she was just a young college student who simply just wanted to run. She didn't see herself as a pioneer or as an activist, but once the opportunity to progress an issue and movement came from her decision to run, she grabbed it with both hands and has had an everlasting impact on the world of sport. Even after her amazing achievement, she perhaps faced the worst of criticism and outright abuse from the press and leaders within the world of athletics. But she stayed resilient because she knew showing defiance was the only way to change the outdated and illogical views displayed in society at that time. 
And that's why she will go down as an icon of resilience. One that we should all turn to whenever we're told that we can't do something.